Hi guys, my name is Lawrence Baker. I'm an Adobe Certified Expert in Photoshop CC and Photoshop Lightroom. This video is going to be about creating a customized thumbnail for a YouTube video via Lightroom. I've picked on YouTube. It could be any other social media platform. Let's go to YouTube's page for the recommendations for the customized thumbnails and i'm going to make a complaint here now guys because if you want to find out these sizes sometimes it's very difficult to find out you have to really search for it let's go to um youtube's web page now right custom thumbnail best practices size i won't read the blurb have a resolution of 1280 by 720. that's a 16 to 9 aspect ratio by the way with a minimum width of 640, a bit counterintuitive that, 1280, 640. Well, two times 640 is 1280. So what they're saying is you can't go below 640. Even the crappiest phone with a camera in it will achieve 640 width, I can assure you. Why would you even think about 640? Anyway, are uploaded in image formats such as JPEG, GIF, BMP and PNG, which are all raster formats. Um, most of us will know what that means, but for photographs, which I'm going to upload or export, it's got to be a JPEG. I can go with PNG 24, but it will make the, the image size too big because PNG can cope with continuous tone images, which are photographs. Anyway, JPEG, remain under the two megabyte limit. Now, as far as Lightroom goes, it works in kilobytes. Well, a megabyte is a thousand kilobytes, so it's 2000 kilobytes. Try to use a 16 to nine aspect ratio as it's the most used on YouTube and the previews. And as I said, 1280 by 720 is 16 to nine aspect ratio. Don't ask me to do math, I can't do it. Back to Lightroom. Right, I need to crop this image. And this is a very important message about cropping in Lightroom. And that means Adobe Camera Raw inside Bridge with Photoshop as well. Cropping does not change the image size. It, all it does is change the aspect ratio. When you come to export, you can change the size. And you think you might be able to distort the image there by changing the settings. But in fact, it will always respect your aspect ratio from your crop. But you can change the actual sizes, but it will maintain the ratio. I'll show you that in a minute. I need to crop this image and I'm going to change the aspect ratio. I'm going to press R. I could go to tools and crop, press the icon here. But I say I show you tools. Tools, crop, first one there. Ah, oh, let's get on with this. I need to crop this to 16 to nine. I go down and hey presto, Lightroom has a preset already in place with 16 to nine on it. It's got 1920 by 1080. Ignore that because 16 to nine can be the 1280 by 720. It's just showing you what it can create. So 16 to nine, let's go ahead. I'm not gonna cover the crop tool in too much detail. I'll just play around a little bit. Rule of thirds there, that's the overlay I've got. I'm quite happy with that. Press return or close, and I've accepted my crop, and it's gone to fill up my screen again. Once it's rendered, and it's taken a long time to render, and that's Adobe's use of the graphics processor in my brand new Mac, and it's still slow. Anyway, I've got this image. I've cropped it to 16 to nine. I've not changed the image size. Well, I have here, it's changed. But, you know, if I press R again, you'll see that I haven't lost the pixels, but I have changed the image size, but that's only on the screen. All I've really changed is the aspect ratio. Let's go and export this image. I could go to file and export, file export, and it's got a keyboard shortcut of shift, command, or control E. I'm gonna use that. Right, I don't have a preset for YouTube thumbnails. I'm gonna create one now. So I'm gonna add the preset, YouTube thumbnail, create, create it. Now it's gonna remember what I've played around with before. So it's got all my Twitter settings, but I'm gonna overwrite them now. Now export to specific folder. Well, I am gonna export to documents because I prefer to export to documents, not to pictures. That's my choice. I don't want it in Twitter header. I want it in YouTube. This is a subfolder, by the way. YouTube thumbnail. Do I want to add this tiny thumbnail back into my catalog? No, I don't. 
Existing files ask what to do. You can overwrite them, uh, etc. But always ask what to do because it gives you the choice. Rename them. On this occasion, I'm not going to rename. I often rename my JPEGs because it makes them easier when you come to sort of upload them again. But I'm just going to go with the file name out of camera. But it's going to obviously going to put JPG on the end because I'm exporting a JPEG, which is in my file settings here. Extensions in lowercase, yes, always. Don't even talk about uppercase, pointless. Image format JPEG, I could pick the other ones there, but no, it's a photograph JPEG, it's fine. Color space, this is really important. Always leave it on sRGB if you're going to another screen. Uh, Adobe RGB 1998 and Profoto RGB are much bigger color spaces. So if you use them, what will happen is you'll not get the colors that you you should have someone else is viewing them on another screen. Now, most monitors support sRGB, if not all of them. Even the screen on your phone supports sRGB. It's a very common color space for monitors. So you would always export to screen with sRGB in. I think S stands for screen, by the way. So it's screen, red, green and blue. Because the other color spaces, Adobe and Profoto, are much, much larger. So any other person's screen will get your photograph and say, well, I, I can't show those colors it's trying to show. I don't support that uh, pro photo. You, the browser definitely doesn't support pro photo. A lot of browsers have started to support some uh, sRGB, not all of them, but the screens definitely do. But the browsers might not often do. But that's that's coming about more and more. So it's the safest color space to have if you're outputting to screen. So don't change it and set a limit to the amount of kilobytes. And we know that it's going to be two megabytes, which is 2000 kilobytes. So I'm limiting the file size to that. So it'll give me the maximum quality at 2000 kilobytes. Resize to width and height. Well, I obviously want it resized to 1280 by 720, which is a 16 to nine aspect ratio. I don't want to enlarge it. And I always keep the resolution at one. It's just to throw people because resolution only applies to print. So this one pixel resolution is a bit of a, a joke with myself. Uh, I can assure you if I put a thousand there, I'll put one when I'm going out to screen and whatever screen I view that image on, it won't look any different at one pixel, um, pixels per inch or, or, or pixels per centimeter or a thousand pixels per centimeter it only applies to print and it's for another video. I would always sharpen for screen and sharpen at standard. Metadata on social media platforms will nearly always be stripped out. There are exceptions. Flickr and 500px and other photo hosting sites will respect your copyright and your keywording and your title and your caption. But Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and I think Google Plus keeps some metadata, but not a lot. But just strip it out. So don't get too fussed about it. A watermarking, why would I watermark a thumbnail? And I think watermarking is a bit naff myself. But if you're concerned about that type of thing, anyway, I can ex export now. Now, I could update the YouTube thumbnail because I've come off it. If I right click on that, I can go update with current settings. So I've created that YouTube thumbnail now because if I didn't do that, it always reset to that Twitter one I had before. Some of these tools inside Lightroom are not that intuitive. It, it, you have to right click a lot and they're a little bit clunky. And I think in this day and age of user interfaces, they're not that friendly and take a little bit of a learning curve. But remember now, because you've just newly created this, this preset, export preset, to right click on the name of it and update the settings. So it remembers all these things. I'm going to export now, but there's one thing I want to see it in Finder, which is Windows equivalent or Mac's equivalent to the Windows Explorer. So I want to see it afterwards and I'll probably open it with preview. Now I'm going to export at that size and have a look at it. It's going to do its work and open up Finder and show me the photograph. Right. I'll have to open this up a little bit so I can see it a little bit better. Now I've got to open in preview. Um, I'll make it bigger. I've got a 5K Mac here, so it's done a really nice job. It's 1.4 megabytes. It's image size is 1280 by 720, which I asked for. The DPI is one pixel per inch. So has it made any difference to that image? No, it hasn't. Take my word for it. You can put what you like there. It makes no difference whatsoever to the image size. If you're going to print, it will make a difference. 
absolutely. But if you're going out to screen, it doesn't matter. It's the size of the image that matters, not the how many pixels per inch. It's only for print, and it's a very complex subject, but take my word for it, it doesn't matter. Color model RGB, as you can see, I've got a profile of sRGB. Now I've got my thumbnail, I can upload it to YouTube, but I'm not going to, because I'm gonna show you something quickly here now as well. Um, now I'm gonna change, I'm not gonna update the setting, I'm gonna change the image size to something ridiculous like 300 by 5000 resolution of one export it i want to look at it in finder it ask me if i want to overwrite it but i do thinking about it it's opened it up now i'm going to open it up in preview which is max way of looking at photographs quickly what about that image now i'm going to go to tools and show inspector now it's made the image 300 by 169 it didn't do what i asked for by 2000 or 5000 it's respected my aspect ratio so it won't resize the image in the same way that photoshop's image size will do you can't distort the image it's still kept the aspect ratio it's still 300 wide by 169 16 to 9 and it's one pixel per inch and it's srgb so that's just to show you that if you even resize with the dialog box and export uh, you can't distort the image you, that really is uh, how you export out of lightroom but the points to remember are cropping is about aspect ratio when you come to export aspect ratio will still be important because you can't go above the aspect ratio you can't distort the image so Try and remember that cropping is an aspect ratio thing, not an image sizing. Even when you export in Lightroom, you cannot change the aspect ratio. I hope you got something from this, guys. It's not a subject a lot of people cover, and I hope I've informed you about cropping and exporting. Thank you very much.